Hello, and welcome to Christianity with Kyle, where the Holy Spirit leads us into God's promises. Christian circles, it's very common to hear about the God of the old. In fact, a lot of Christians live out of the God of the old, where they think God is very far away from them, and that God is ready to drop the hammer and punish them for any sin that they commit at any moment. This is a very common understanding within Christianity. And what if I told you it is completely inaccurate? What if I told you that today we're going to discuss the true character of God in the old and the new, and how they are the exact same? Same. It's going to be a really good video. Let's get into it. Get used to different. This is that time in the video that I ask you to become a subscriber, and that's because Ecclesiastes 4 9 says two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. And that's what I'm asking for you to become a subscriber and help us build this community so we can all succeed in advancing the kingdom of God. If you are a subscriber, I'd love for you to like, share, and comment on this video that helps get us into the algorithm and spread this message, the message of Christ, the our Lord and Savior for all of eternity to all mankind. Let's get into the video. Sadly, it is extremely common in mainstream Christianity to have this perspective about God that is completely erroneous, completely inaccurate about God's character, about God's functions, about God's personage, about God in so many different ways. And, and we're going to correct a lot of those understandings, a lot of those theologies throughout my series and throughout your time at my channel, uh, Christian with Kyle. But today we're going to just address one of them and it's the character of God. It's God's personage. It's who God is for all time. Was he different in the old compared to the new? And if he was, why was he different? Well, number one, it's important to understand that God had to interact differently with the Old Testament uh, people because they were in the old covenant. There wasn't the blood of Jesus yet. And frankly, the way God interacted with the old, uh, God was completely just at any point in time to destroy all of them. Why? Well, because they were all guilty of sin. The Bible says the penalty of sin is death. And so at any point in time, God would have been completely just, completely righteous to destroy and wipe out all of mankind because they all deserve the penalty of sin. But that's not what he did. And so right there, you can see that God's character in the Old Testament is the exact same to the character that he has in the New Testament. He has a character of mercy. And so let's go look at the scriptures and we're going to kind of draw this point out a little bit more. If we look at Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verse 8, the Bible says this is New Testament. Hebrews, it's, it's, it's how you know God likes the smell of coffee because he brews, right? Uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there we have a scripture for a basis of our belief, right? And so what it's saying here is that God does not change. God is the same for all time. Okay. And so what we recognize with that is if God doesn't change, then he can't be a different God in the old and a different God in the new. It's the same God but re recognize you're going to interact differently with your children than you are with a stranger who's trying to attack your children. You're going to have a different disposition. And so what we see with God's character is he has a different disposition with different individuals, but he doesn't have a different character as a whole. Okay, God's character is love. God's character is grace. God's character never changes. Okay, so let's go look at a story in the old where you can see God's mercy mercy and God's grace and all of the attributes we attribute toward Jesus and toward the Father in the new functioning in the old. Let's jump into that. The account in the Old Testament we're going to be discussing today is the account of Samson. And if you've been a Christian for any period of time, you've likely heard this account. However, we're going to have a little bit of a different take that you've probably never heard before. And so just hang with me for a moment while we read through this. Uh, Samson starts in the book of Judges. Judges, if you're unfamiliar, they were not kings of Israel, but the leaders of Israel. And so where you're going to find the story of Samson is Judges 13. And Judges 13 says, Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, so the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistine for 40 years. And so someone might look at that scripture and go, look, there's God being wrathful, being vengeful. No, 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 no. That's not God being wrathful. That's God being merciful. Okay. And the Bible continues on and it talks about Samson's mom, Hannah. And Hannah was barren. She was childless. And, and what happens is God sends an angel of the Lord to her and says, you are barren and childless, but you're going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. Now see to it that you drink no wine or fermented drink and that you eat nothing unclean and then you'll become pregnant and have a 
a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is a Nazare dedicated to God from the womb. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. And just for time's sake, the Nazarite vow has three components. There, The Nazarites were a special people group that God anointed for a special purpose. And so the first thing they couldn't do as you just heard, they can't drink anything from grape juice, including wine. Okay, and then the second part is they're not to touch anything unclean, which would be, would be anything dead. And the third one is that they can never cut their hair. Okay, so this vow just consecrates their life to the Lord because they're going to give up a few things for the anointing and the blessing God has put on their life. And they're going to separate themselves from the world. And so that way they can walk out God's purpose. Well, Samson was a Nazarite from birth through his mother who consecrated him through not doing these actions actions for him. And so he was born in the Nazarite vow. And so Samson had to adhere to these three things, which was God's instruction through this angel to Hannah. And as Samson grew up, there's a lion who comes and attacks him. And he, and he, Samson is so strong. He takes the lion and he rips the lion in half. Okay. And then he goes on and at the wedding feast, Samson's drinking. Okay. So Samson has broken one part of the vow. Now as he gets super hungry. He actually goes and touches that lion. And in that lion, there was a bee's nest that that created a nest inside the lion's carcass. And so of course, what's he doing? He's touching the dead animal. So now he's broken the second part of the vow. You would look at that and go, God could have easily stripped him of the anointing. You see, that wasn't what God wanted. God did not desire sacrifice. God did not desire his justice to be first. God desires mercy first. Let's go back to the story of Samson so you can see how that story ends up. So now we're going to pick up back in the book of Judges, chapter 16, in verse 21, uh, just to give you a little context. Uh, so he had married Delilah, and he was deceived by Delilah, and he, and he broke all three aspects of the Nazarite vow. And then after that, they says, Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza. Binding him with bronze shackles, they set him to grinding grain in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. And so what we see there is God makes a very specific point to mention that Samson's hair had grown back out because he had been in prison for a period of time. And that's what allowed God to now open up the mercy and grace and blessing back onto Samson, restoring Samson's strength so Samson could go and continue to fulfill his purpose, which he ultimately did, which was to destroy the kings and the leadership of the Philistine people which opened up the children of Israel to be freed from the bondage that they were under from the Philistines during that time. And so what we see is God's character of mercy, of love and of grace exactly the same in the old as it is in the new. And so we can count on God for mercy and grace and love in our lives, just like as he has always been doing. He is not different in the old as he is in the new. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever, and the same God that we can put our faith and our trust and know that if we make a mistake, God is merciful and just to forgive us, especially since we have the blood of Jesus covering us. And so I pray that if you're in a place where you need God's mercy, that you recognize that you have not gone too far outside of it, God's mercy and his grace and his love is waiting to be poured up upon us to restore us back to a place of fulfilling God's purpose for our life. Well, that's all I've got for today. May God's richest and best be forever yours. Thank you for watching this video. I have another channel where I exclusively focus on financial ministry to help equip every single one of us for the digital future that is coming. And when you're equipped for that, you will advance the kingdom like never before. So go check out that channel. You link is in the description below. Subscribe and that way you're equipped for the digital digital future. Have a blessed day.